Hi, I'm Johnny from UltimatePaperMache.com and in the last video I showed you a new recipe for hopefully a weatherproof paper mache clay recipe. We did some experiments and I showed you that it was looking like it was not damaged at all by water once it had had time to cure. But now of course we need to have something to really experiment with so that we can put it outside and find out how long it will actually last if we put it out there in the weather, let it get rained on, snowed on, and the whole business. So in this video, I'm going to show you uh, this casting of a leaf. This is a, a, a squash leaf. I got one from out in my garden and I actually used it as a, a mold. As you can see, the, the detail on it is really nice. It, it worked really well. And the reason that I made this thing, I actually hadn't intended to. <laughs> there was a whole bunch of other things that I thought I was going to make instead and, and decided on this guy, mostly because um, I got an idea from a YouTuber who suggested that I make a toad. I was thinking about making a giant rabbit, which I'm still going to do because I would love to have one. And I was also kind of toying with the idea of making a, a, a turtle. But when he suggested the, the toad, I thought, oh boy, that's going to be fun. <laughs> They haven't made one of those. So I did get started on the toad. You can see he's going to sit here. It's still got the aluminum foil armature. But he's got really, really skinny fingers and toes. So I knew that if I just put him out in the garden, it's going to take about two weeks before I somehow break him. <laughs> that was just going to happen. So he needed something to sit on to, to keep him safe. You know, I'm kind of thinking now that it'd be kind of fun to make a green man by using a casting of a leaf for the for the hair and beard area and then do the sculpture of the face on it. Wouldn't that be kind of cool? But in this one, it's just a flat leaf <laughs> so that the toad can sit on him. After I get this video up, I'll go ahead and finish the toad and I'll show you how I make him in the next video. But in this video, I'll show you how I made the leaf casting. So let's go ahead and get started on this. I'll show you how I did the, the leaf and mention a couple of things that I should have done but didn't think of. The first thing I did was to go find a leaf uh, out in the garden. I got it off of a squash plant and it's just the right size for my little toad. Then I mixed up some of the weatherproof paper mache clay. It's got a half a cup of drywall joint compound, half a cup of Elmer's glue, which is PVA glue, and a half a cup of damp toilet paper. I mixed that all up really good and I showed you how I did that in the previous video. I'll put a link to that down below. And then I added a cup of Portland cement and mixed it up really, really good. I put it into a plastic bin right away and then took everything else out to the garden and washed out the bowl and the mixers and everything else. Uh, as I said before, you do not ever want to wash cement-based products <laughs> in the sink because it will harden underwater and you don't want to have to call the plumber. So don't do that. And then I came back in and I started spreading it out over my leaf. I put it on really thin right at first because I wanted to make sure that it would be capturing all those really fine details on the leaf. And you also notice if you're used to watching people make concrete leaves out of uh, big, oh, like Ganera leaves or uh, rhubarb leaves, they'll mound up some sand, then they'll put the leaf upside down, just like I did. Mine's upside down too, so that the, the veins are heavier and thicker and they'll show up better. But because of the way that the sand is usually mounded, the finished concrete leaf is going to create like a bird bath. It's going to be a, a bowl. This is not supposed to be a <laughs> experiment in finding out if our weatherproof paper mache clay will be able to hold water for a really, really long time. So I flattened it out. It would have looked nicer if it was cup shaped and that would look more natural too, but uh, I, just, I just didn't want to risk it this first time. So I flattened him. I did stick some rolled up paper towels under a few areas that were just naturally um, kind of wrinkling and, and folding over and I thought that looked pretty nice so I went ahead and did that. And then I had a whole bunch left over so I just kept adding uh, more. I tried to make it reasonably thin on the edges but not so thin that it would crack really easy just as soon as I you know, hit it against something. Now just after I had put this, all of the weatherproof paper mache clay over the leaf, I got a note from our friend Lee Bell from the blacklilystudio.com. Uh, she does beautiful, huge outdoor 
sculptures with a cement-based product. They're beautifully painted. And she mentioned that uh, she always reinforces her cement sculptures with a nylon mesh. I should have done that with my leaf as well. My father used to make a lot of cement rhubarb leaves and I'm pretty sure he always put some sort of reinforcing in them. I think it was chicken wire. I didn't think of it, but I think leaves right with something this thin and where it's where there's nothing backing it at all. I really think it would have been a good idea to put a mesh in there. And of course I have some. It's a mesh that's used with drywall. It's not expensive. Really should have done that. I wouldn't bother doing that with anything like my toad that has an, an armature made out of crumpled foil because the foil itself is reinforcing. The, the mixture will go in all the little dips and crannies and, and that acts as a mesh. But for something that's not supported by anything and it's big and flat like this, I think that uh, Lee is really right. It should have something in there. To add just a little bit of insurance to keep it from cracking. Since nobody's ever going to see the backside of this leaf, I thought it'd be a, a really good time to do a little bit of testing to see how to make the bumps on my toad. It'd be just really hard to do without a stamp of some kind. And I just happened to have some paper towels, had little dimples in them. It, there was kind of a circular pattern that obviously wouldn't work for a toad, but I thought it would be interesting at least to press it into the wet cement mix and see if it would pick up the, the texture or not. And it did. I actually did get some bumps. They're really subtle. They obviously don't stick out very much. They're not perfect, <laughs> but it let me know that it is going to be possible to use a stamp instead of having to hand sculpt all those uh, warts. So I will be using this idea when I start on the toad's skin, but I'm not gonna use the, the paper towel. I found another way to make a much easier temporary stamp, and I'll show you how I did that in the next video. What I didn't know yet is whether or not the, the uh, cement mixture was going to pick up all of the details on the leaf. There's so many fine details. Uh, on, the, on the leaf that I wanted to be able to see when it was all done. And of course we can't find that out until it, it turns solid. So I put a piece of plastic over it. It's got a piece of plastic under it and I left it to get a little bit harder overnight, about, about 24 hours. After the 24 hours, the cement mixture had hardened so that, at least hardened enough so that I could pick it up without it bending but it was still really soft. As a matter of fact, I was able to just scratch in the date for no apparent reason. <laughs> I just didn't know what else to scratch in there just to try it out. And it's, it's obviously really, really soft at this point. So I had to be really careful with it. I felt it was uh, strong enough if I was really, really careful, I could try getting the leaf off of it so that I could see how much detail it was able to pick up. Before I figured out exactly how careful I had to be, I actually broke off a little part that was up near the stem. Um, I don't think it's going to make any difference because the toad is going to be sitting on the leaf and nobody's going to be looking at it all that closely <laughs> anyway. But next time, I'm going to remember to be really, really super careful when I'm doing anything with a, a piece that hasn't had time to fully cure it. And this really, it isn't even beginning to get dry. It's just starting to cure now. So we gotta be really super careful. And we can't rush it. The, the curing, a lot of people have mentioned out on YouTube and on my website that any kind of cement mixture has to have plenty of time to cure because that's what makes it harder. If you try to speed it up, like putting it in the oven, putting it out in the sun, putting it in front of a fan, any of that stuff, it's actually going to remove the, the water and it's the, the chemical reaction between the water and the Portland cement that turns it back into a rock. So we just have to take it slowly and be really careful with it until it's really cured all the way through. Most of it came off really well. And as you can see here, it made a perfect casting. You can see absolutely every single vein. Would it work just as well in a silicone mold, maybe for a, a wall sculpture? 
We haven't tried it yet, so I really don't know. But it's possible that if it was applied thinly enough so it can dry all the way through, and if it was reinforced with that mesh, it might work. But we won't know until someone has tried it. So now at this point, it's actually been about four days since I actually made it. It is still not as hard as it's going to get, so it has to cure. And in the meantime, I'm going to go ahead and finish that uh, toad so that they can go together. And I'm probably going to give them both at least two weeks, maybe even more, before I go ahead and, and put some primer on there and get them painted. I'm really hoping that I can get the paint on the leaf to look as close as possible to the real one so that I can stick them out in the garden and I think they would just look really nice out there. And then we leave it for a whole year and find out what happens. Are they going to survive that long? We're going to find out. Now there are a couple of things that I could really use some help with. I don't have this guy done, but he will be of course when I make the next video. And I also am going to have to somehow attach this cement based guy to this cement based thing. <laughs> and I don't actually know yet what would be the best glue or, or material to actually stick them together. So if you happen to have an idea for that, please let us know. There is one thing also that I would really like to get some help with, and that is finding another name for this material. Um, for some reason, weatherproof paper mache clay is really hard for me to say over and over again. I don't know why, I just get tripped up <laughs> and have to keep doing the video over again every time I mess it up. So if you can come up with a better name for it, something catchy, um, I'm kind of leaning towards um, paper creep mache, but I don't know if anybody would understand what that's about. But if you have some really good ideas, please uh, let me know. Something short and, and snappy would be really cool. <laughs> the um, also I want to mention that in the last uh, in the comment section of the last video, and I know there's going to be some below here too. We're getting a lot of really helpful comments from people who have a whole lot more. Uh, experience with cement based products than I do and they're giving us some really fantastic ideas. I'm really hoping that you go ahead and read through the comments. Don't just put your own comment in there but read everybody else's too. If you happen to have experience with cement and somebody asks a question that I can't answer yet because I don't have that much experience with it, please go ahead and, and help people out. So go check out those comments. I'm really hoping that you'll be one of the many people who have already volunteered to do some experiments with this weatherproof paper mache clay. <laughs> and please, if you do, remember to come back and tell us how it turns out. And in the meantime, come visit me at ultimatepapermache.com. I'll see you there.